They found what in what? Oh, man, you, wait till you hear this story coming out. We got a lot of good stuff as well. We have the, yes, the Gold Star Mothers are now joining a motorcycle club to honor their fallen soldier. Beautiful stuff, man. Beautiful stuff. We also have... You know how Easy Riders canceled that, or not Easy Riders, but the actual fairground canceled the Easy Riders rodeo? Well, they're going to lose a lot of money. Lots of money. Don't forget to go over to Roku and download the Insane Throttle TV app as well as our Insane Throttle radio app over on Google Play. And as always, go over to Instagram, check us out at official insane throttle here we go That's right. You can also head over to InsaneThrottleTV.com. That is our website. Let's get into the news. couple great stories happening right now. Here we are at 20 WCJB. What is it? ABC. There we go. Here we is. Christmas is right around the corner, and the season of giving is starting now. TV20's Taylor Simpson shows us how people in Marion County are embracing the holiday spirit by helping others. Families stop by to donate toys and gifts that will go to needy children here in Marion County this holiday season. The Punisher's Law Enforcement Motorcycle Club held a poker run to raise money and get residents to donate gifts to Toys for Tots. Last year, they raised more than $14,000. That this time of year, year coming. Our goal is to double that. And all the proceeds of everything that we do go to the kids right here in Marion County that need Christmas. There should be a single child that doesn't have something for Christmas. The Marion County Toys for Tots coordinator says he used to be homeless himself and wants to thank everyone that donates. Christmas Day, okay, when they're done unwrapping their gifts and everything, they'll sit back on the couch or enjoying their coffee or whatever they're doing, just sit back and I want you to relax and just think about it for a minute and say, you know what? You put a smile on a child's face at Christmas. So that's what this is all about. And he wants to challenge people to give back. Wherever they work, ask their boss or themselves, Are you have you given to Toys for Tots or any other organization? Last year, they distributed more than 49,000 toys to just over 11,000 kids and hope to help more children this year have a gift to open on Christmas. Yeah, 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 there you go. And that's going to be happening all over the nation. All this charity happening because of bikers. My favorite story right here is out of military.com. This has to do with Gold Star Mothers honoring their departed soldiers by joining Motorcycle Club. I would play the video, but uh, I'll get a copy on that. Uh, the sound that they got the music so for a parent there is no greater loss than the passing of a child that's why grace darlin siebold former uh gold star mothers she formed this after her son died in action during world war one there's some history for you right there uh, today, Gold Star Mothers is a thriving community for mothers everywhere, grieving the loss of a son or a daughter who died protecting their country. The organization has chapters countrywide that organize patriotic events in remembrance of those they lost. But also to raise money for the American tradition of sisterhood, uh, there was 300 bikers that were at this event, including some of the Gold Star moms, honor their lost uh, children while raising funds for vets. My goodness, great stuff right there, man. Great stuff. You know, them mothers are the best of the best. Gold Star mothers right there. Losing a child to a uh, conflict in service of our country. Now, do you know that Easy Riders got the boot. The fairgrounds where they were having the rodeo they've had for all these years, by the way. 
because of one Leo saying that he didn't want to provide security. Next thing it all got canceled out of nowhere. Now, what does that do? What that does is affect the whole community because the loss of revenue, it's going to hit him in the pocket. And it seems like the fairgrounds didn't care about that. All they cared about was one law enforcement off of her. The Lone Star Rally took place this past weekend. And I'm going to play a video of how Houston, the click2houston.com, talked about the event leading up to it. 400,000 the rally attracted. Now remember, it's already over, but I wanted to give you guys a little background because of this is what's going to happen to the deal with Ohio. This is what they're going to lose out on. Any star rallies taking over the island this weekend after it was canceled last year. Downtown Galveston and Seawall Boulevard will be filled with concerts, exhibits, and vendors. More than 400,000 visitors are expected to attend. Our Roseanne Aragon is live in Galveston to show us around tonight. That's right, Galveston has welcomed the Lone Star Rally since 2001. As you can see, there is lots of action and motorcycles. It's a sound dearly familiar to bike enthusiasts. We look forward to this every year. This is the Lone Star Rally, bringing more than 400,000 motorcycles to Galveston. And after canceling last year due to COVID. Well, Lone Star Rally is back in, in full force. A four-day event, which city officials say brings in more than $100 million to the local economy for people like Rick. One hundred million dollars. Brandon Landry. It is a bonding amongst all of us that ride motorcycles. It's our passion for riding the motorcycle. And uh, I've been here for the past 10 years, except for last year, the COVID, lockdown, no bike riding. It was devastating for us because that's what we do. Nancy Lopez came from Rio Grande City. About 700 miles. For the tastes, tents, and togetherness. This is a heritage, Harley Davidson. Local businesses say it's a lifeline. This is fantastic. We have been suffering for 18 months. Mike Dean is the owner of Yaga's Cafe. Lone Star Rally alone pays for all of my bills in November. Hundreds of vendors and entertainment. We had Colt Ford last night. We had Lee Greenwood. And of course, 2008 Electric Light Ultra Classic. People's passion parading with pride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blame your sheriff out there in Ohio canceling that Easy Riders Rodeo. Now, our main story. This was a weird one. Meth-infused candle seized by police during the Hells Angels drug raid in Brisbane. Yes, they're cooking some candles up in Brisbane. Uh, it goes on to say it looks like a candle you find at Kmart. There's still Kmarts out there, man, because they're like all closed around here in the States. There's Walmart, but Kmart, hmm, you guys are behind times. But police are on a mission to get these dangerous items off Australia's streets. And with a very good reason. Police raid uncovers meth-infused candle. Hall of firearms and piles of cash. Three men linked to the Hells Angels Outlaw Motorcycle Gang were charged more than $3 million in meth and heroin was allegedly seized at Property 7 Firearms were also uncovered at the clandestine drug lab. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, heavily armed officers busted down the door of an alleged commercial-sized drug lab Season three million dollars in meth and heroin, as well as seven firearms and 153 G's in cash. Now, three men allegedly. Now, this is allegedly, and everybody's innocent until proven, uh, you know, guilty. I don't know how that works over in Australia, though. Don't know how it does. 
They linked to the Hells Angels motorcycle gang were arrested near East Brisbane facility on the 4th of November and charged with a litany of offenses, including drug trafficking. But it was one very strange detail that had seasoned drug detectives scratching their heads. A two kilogram candle, which looks identical to items sold at stores like Kmart, was taken from the alleged drug lab and found to be infused with the street drug ice. Huh. The bizarre Mexican cartel tactic to conceal the dangerous drug was first identified on America's East Coast several years ago and has been a growing problem ever since as the waxy texture perfectly hides the dangerous substance hey they're stepping out of the box they're improvising what do you want me to say <laughs> anyway uh australians uh federal police queenland's national anti-gang Squad Queen, uh, you know, all the raptor this and raptor that kind of crap. And then it goes into the men again. Uh, the link is in the description box. The, uh, my goodness, to read this article. Candles! Can you believe it? Now, our wall of shame. Henderson police officer arrested on domestic battery charge. Nasty business. Ah, sad state of affairs. Uh, uh, Henderson police officer was arrested on Sunday and booked on charges of domestic battery. First offense, Zachary Willingham, 38, had been placed on paid administrative leave pending the outcome of an investigation. Now, it is a misdemeanor. He was arrested and booked into the Henderson Detention Center. According to this, he was hired on the 26th of December of 2017. The investigation remains open and no further details will be released at this time. And then, of course, they say anyone with the information stuff. So it looks like uh, Mr. Police Officer was beating on his wife or girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever he was doing. I don't care. I don't judge. Now, let's take a look at a channel you should know. Biker Dad. Yes, he's got a good series coming out. I think he actually has it going on, but Biker Dad's really cool. He used to be a reporter down in Alabama, I believe it was, and then he started his own thing. Way to go. That's what I say. A lot of good stuff here, a lot of good shorts. Uh, he's just getting it going, so guys, get on over and check out Biker Dad you won't regret it. You won't regret it, I'm telling you. So, what do you guys think, man? Candles infused. People are getting really creative right now, I'm telling you. Oh, my goodness gracious. And that deal with, uh, you know, the Galveston thing with the, the rally should show all these other towns just how much money they're going to lose when they cancel these type of events because of supposed law enforcement concerns. So one man could have costed all those local businesses in Ohio a lot of money. Man, I'd be getting torches and everything else right at that jail. That's how much money they're probably going to lose from the biker's not coming in anymore. I am wondering if Easy Riders uh, is looking around for other venues. I think it'd be smart because they've been holding it forever. Uh, I think, actually, that was their ending event, if I'm not uh, mistaken. I might be mistaken. Hell, I'm always mistaken. But what do you want from me? Anyway, guys, don't forget, uh, if you got Roku TV, install the Insane Throttle TV channel on there. Lots of good stuff. We're putting other creator stuff uh, on the channel. That way it gets them some recognition for all their hard work that they're doing for Biker Entertainment. If you want some of your stuff on the channel, hit me up on, uh, what is it, uh, Instagram. Yeah, that's where I'll take stuff. It's easier than all these emails. At official uh, Insane Throttle on Instagram right there. You can see it. 
If you want to listen to the morning hoot, oh boy, it is a hoot with myself and China Dow. Go ahead and download that radio app, Insane Throttle Radio app, over on Google Play. You guys have a good one. I'll catch you later. Rock on. <laughs>